Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Green Mountain Care Board meeting. My name is Kevin Mullen, and I'm chair of the board. The first item on the agenda for this afternoon will be the executive director's report. Susan Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a few announcements. First, I just wanted to make sure the um, board knew, as well as the public, that our counsel today is Associate General Counsel of the Green Mountain Care Board, Lynn Combs. So I wanted to make folks aware of that. Um, I also have a rate announcement to make the, um, the on June 16th of this year, 2020, the board issued, issued its unanimous decision in the Cigna large group rate filing. Cigna requested rate changes that would have an overall impact to the current manual rates of 15%. The board reduced the proposed pharmacy trend adjustment from 6.8% to 6.1%. The proposed administrative expenses from 6.3% to 5.3%, and the proposed profit assumptions from 3.5% to 0%. As a result, the board approved an overall impact to the current manual rates of approximately 9%. I also wanted to give an update on a discussion that the board had a few board meetings ago regarding the technical advisory group on pharmaceutical uh, purchasing and prices and the impact of pharmaceuticals on um, health care costs. Um, after that discussion, the board decided that we would move forward with a technical advisory group. The timing on that um, will be pushed out later to this fall, um, depending on how uh, we are doing in terms of resources and um, in light of uh, additional changes that may occur regarding COVID. Um, the last item I wanted to share is that we had no public comments for either of the matters that are proposed for votes today regarding the vital budget and the ACO budget guidance for 2021. And that is all I have to report. I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Susan. In a minute, I'm going to call back on you to uh, take a, the attendance on the phone numbers. Sure. Um, but before we do that, I want to take up the minutes of Wednesday, June 3rd. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved by Member Holmes and seconded by Member Pelham to approve the minutes of Wednesday, June 3rd, without any additions, deletions, or corrections. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Susan, I'm going to take it and send it back over to you sure. for attendance. Sure, and I'll be calling out the last four numbers of your phone number, if you could uh, um, announce your name when I call those numbers. I'll start with 2505. Jennifer Paula, CVM Medical Center. Great, thank you. 0043. Becky Lewandowski with DRM. 5001. Julia Shaw with the Healthcare Advocate. Thank you, Leah. 1042. Robin Alvis, NMC. Thank you. 0229. Rick Dooley, Health First. Thank you. Welcome. 0154. Christina DeGlass Murphy, Health Network. Great. 7111. Judy Fox from Rutland. Great. Thank you, Judy. I think 1970 is our office. 3212. Kathy Mahoney from the General Advisory Committee. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Um, I have also just listed under non-staff Susan Aronoff, Austin Carmone, Carmone Austin. Sorry. Kathy Anderson, Bob Cherno, Carol Stone, and Dr. Wasserman. And okay. Spencer Weppler as well. Spencer Weppler. Sorry about that, Spencer. Okay, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Susan. The first item on the agenda, uh, we're going to turn over to Sarah Kensler, and that is a, uh, a vote on the uh, vital proposal. Sarah? Thank you. Um, give me one moment, and I will be sharing my screen. It's just taking a second to load, it looks like. Are folks able to see the presentation? I don't see it yet. So not not yet. And uh, um, now we have it, Sarah. And just uh, I guess, um, Susan, this is a, a good time to uh, mention that um, beginning in July, we will be switching the platform to Teams. Great. Yes. Um, we found that the Skype support has. Um, trailed off and some technical difficulties have occurred in in terms of research we found that teams is really the way um, that microsoft is going and the state is supporting that so we'll be moving that at uh, july 1st and abigail will share all of the information for folks moving forward i'll also mention that um, the slides sarah has on our screen are also on our website okay sarah whenever you're ready Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, for the record, this is Sarah Kinsler, Director of Strategy and Operations at the Green Mountain Care Board. Um, I'm going to give a very brief overview of the board's oversight authority related to Vermont Information Technology Leaders, or VITAL, Vermont's designated sole health information exchange network, uh, summarize VITAL's budget submission presented on June 3rd, and provide a staff recommendation. I texted you. He shit his pants. I put him in the bathtub. If we could just All ask right. uh, everybody to mute themselves so we don't hear the the uh, <laughs> commotion in the backgrounds. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, as part of its oversight and policymaking activities related to health information technology and health information exchange, the board is required to review and approve vital budget annually. Uh, this authority came to the board in 2015 and was first exercised in 2016. The board's oversight is intended to provide strategic guidance and policy parameters. Vital presented its FY 2021 budget to the board on June 3rd. This slide summarizes Vital's FY21 budget submission. As a reminder, the board approved Vital's initial FY20 budget in June 2019. Um, Vital requested a budget adjustment approved in January 2020 due to increased work scope and revenue from its contract with DIVA. Um, so for fiscal year 2021, uh, VITAL anticipates $1.1 million in revenue. This includes $7.6 million in state funding. As a reminder, VITAL's contracts with the state run on a calendar year basis, so this budget reflects six months of revenue that has already been awarded, while the second half of the fiscal year, that's January to June, June 2021, is an estimate. VITAL's fiscal year 2021 budget includes an increase of $1.1 million in state funding compared to the updated fiscal year 20 budget, which the board approved in January again, um, but also anticipates a $1 million reduction in VITAL's contract, um, in VITAL's calendar year 2020 contract with DIVA due to work expected to be delayed or not performed due to COVID-19. The budget also includes a $1 million, $1 million in non-state funding and a $517,000 negative revenue item um, from the anticipated impact from COVID. Um, VITAL has budgeted $7.8 million in expenses. Um, labor is the largest expense at $3.1 million, followed by software and server maintenance um, and uh, the high hosting. Um, in addition to that $517,000 negative revenue line mentioned earlier, VITAL has also built in an additional uh, $100,000 in uh, contingency expense line. Um, does the board have any questions about the budget submission itself, or shall I move on to the review criteria? I think we can hold everything to the end, Sarah. All right. Um, so when the board first began reviewing VITAL's budget, it established four principles for review. These are listed on the board's website. Um, in the following slides, I'll walk through these criteria along with the staff assessment of whether these criteria were met. Um, first, the review process will be transparent and will incorporate public input. Um, we usually measure that by compliance with the budget guidance and overall transparency of the budget process. Um, and this year we found that VITAL has complied with the budget guidance. Um, the guidance was submitted on May 18th and May 19th as required and included all requested components. Um, 
Vital also responded to board members' questions uh, about the budget in a timely fashion and provided additional information when requested. A special public comment period was open from Tuesday, June 2nd through this past Monday, June 15th. Um, and as, as Susan noted, um, the board received zero written comments. So the, um, the second review criteria is that the board will review vital budget in order to determine whether it reflects the strategy and priorities consistent with the state's health care reform goals and the health information technology plan. Um, the board will not direct the technical details of vital's work or the details of vital's contractual relationship with the state. Um, so staff assessed alignment relative to the goals of the 2019 to 2020 HIE strategic plan, which approved, was approved in November um, and updated in January and is also available on our website. Um, staff found that vital budgeted activities will advance the goals of the HIE plan, which I've listed here, uh, by pushing toward more effective foundational services, exchange services, and end user services. Um, and these are categories which reflect the Office of the National Coordinator's framework for describing critical health information exchange services, um, which is the, the framework that our HIE plan relies on. Um, and I've also included some examples of the projects which I think um, support these different kinds of services. Um, third, the board's review process must be structured and timed in order to assist DIVA and VITAL in negotiating timely and effective agreements each year. Um, I'll note that this criteria was more critical when um, VITAL's budget year and its contract year with DIVA were, um, had, had the same start date, but now that they're staggered, um, this is less critical. That said, um, GMCB staff worked closely with DIVA staff to ensure that this review timeline um, wouldn't, wouldn't step on their toes at all um, or, or with their federal contracting requirements. And lastly, um, the process must result in board decisions that are sufficiently clear to enable VITAL to do its work and DIVA to support that work without requiring repeated clarification or intervention by the board. Um, staff will ensure that written decisions stemming from this budget review are in fact sufficiently clear. Um, so given these findings, uh, my recommendation is to approve the VITAL budget as presented with two conditions. Um, first, VITAL and DIVA will return to the board in late uh, 2020 to present their um, January to June 2021 budget once those contract negotiations with DIVA um, for their calendar year 2021 budget or excuse me, contract are completed. Um, and secondly, um, VITAL will present to the board quarterly to provide updates um, since the budget approval, which will include up updates on um, governance and operations, finances, and technology. Um, as well as a copy of their plan for stakeholder outreach to gather feedback on integration of 42 CFR Part 2 and other sensitive data in the VHI, which is an initiative that they are currently working on that we heard about at their budget presentation. Um, I'll just note that VITAL currently reports quarterly to the board on governance, operations, finances, and technology using templates developed by GMCB staff. So this would be a continuation of that reporting. And that is all. Does the board have any questions about VITAL's budget or this recommendation? Board members, any questions? I'm not hearing any, but I do think we should open it up to uh, public comment before there's uh, a motion. So at this point, I'll open it up to public comment on the vital presentation. Very, very quiet group today. Um, do I have a motion from a board member? Well, I'll move that uh, we um, adopt the vital budget um, as presented um, by staff. I don't have the uh, screen up in front of me or I would be more specific. <laughs> Sarah, could I you just uh, put that screen back up that shows what your recommendation was? Yes, absolutely, my apologies. While Sarah's doing that, I, I would like to thank her for her, her hard work and looking forward, um, you know, there will be some improvements in the budget process. One of them is getting a measure of these consolidated uh, collaboration savings uh, because Vital ended up being the deliverer of, of the products there. Their budget went up on some line items that looks significant, but in fact, it's a, a 
part of an across the board savings with the Department of Health and Vital and DIVA and the blueprint. Um, and I think the next time we see the budget, uh, we'll, we'll be able to um, have that as background to the um, investments in collaborative services. Okay, so Member Pelham has moved that the vital budget uh, be approved as presented with two conditions as presented um, by staff. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay, it's been seconded. Are, is there discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. So that motion is carried. Thank you, Sarah. I think Tom uh, um, said it well that uh, you did a great job on this uh, this year's vital presentation, and um, thank you for all that you do. So at this time, we're going to transition over. So Sarah, if you could um, take yourself off the screen, and we're going to uh, turn the meeting over to Elena Barabee on the ACO budget guidance. So whenever you are ready, Elena, take it away. All right, thank you. I'm going to share. My was that your house where somebody was supposed to be in the bath? <laughs> yeah, I was um, glad you didn't hear the first part of that. We had a, a nap time accident um, anyway, so I'll share you details. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't share more. So um, we'll dive into the ACO budget. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so today we're going to revisit the uh, FY 2021 ACO oversight uh, process. Um, so this will be budget guidance and certification, eligibility verification. And, you know, if everything looks good to you, then we can um, contemplate a board vote. Okay, so first I'll summarize kind of what we went over on the third, very briefly discuss public comment, um, some minor edits since the June 3rd presentation, and then next steps. So just to reiterate, our goals for the 2021 oversight process were really to think about regulatory integration and to think about how we can continue to reduce the administrative burden um, on our regulated entities, especially in the wake of COVID-19. Um, so these things, you know, need to be balanced, certainly. Um, and then, you know, for our ACO oversight processes, we don't really have any changes for the certification eligibility forms. That's just more rolling it over year to year. Um, but on the budget guidance, we really sought to simplify questions and reduce redundancies, clarify references, um, either, you know, where the ACO or all-payer model are, are distinct, um, separate content necessary for the budget guidance versus ongoing monitoring, relying on data more than narrative, and then understand changes due specifically to COVID-19 versus other factors, and then try to understand implications of participation for hospitals. So those are the main criteria that we discussed uh, two weeks ago now. And then just at a high level, the, the framework is organized around the introduction, which talks a little bit about, you know, why we have this process and then recognizes COVID-19 as a major challenge to this, this year um, and thinking about next year. Um, and then part one is the reporting requirements organized around these eight categories, background, provider network, payer programs, total cost of care, risk management, the ACS budget, and then all of their programs um, around quality improvement, population health, model of care, and then how they integrate with their community um, initiatives. And then some other questions on the Vermont all payer model specifically. Part two discusses the ACO budget targets, so our Medicare benchmark and some other targets uh, and then part three discusses uh, staff plans to put together a monitoring document that will serve as a companion to this, uh, this document here. Um, public comments, we had no public comments that were submitted, um, and that was true, I think, even until this morning, um, so we haven't seen anything come in. But I did, we did take um, into consideration, you know, all the board comments that were made last uh, during our last presentation, incorporated those. And then we're also working um, with one of our contractors on a bigger initiative um, to look at uh, system-wide risk. And they have provided some guidance to um, our hospital budget process, which got postponed um, to later in the summer or the early fall. But we want to make sure those initiatives are aligned. 
Um, so we had them review our guidance in the meantime, and they offered some feedback to help us kind of clarify um, how the flow, the you know, the funds flow between these processes. So in section two, you know, it's minor, but we really wanted to differentiate between the different types of payment types. So some of these uh, fixed payments are risk-based, and some of them are more just a cash flow mechanism. So um, being clear about what we mean by FTP and when it's risk-based and when it's not. Um, section five, we want to differentiate between risk transfer to our providers and risk mitigation. That helps alleviate some of the um, burden of the risk on our providers and on the system as a whole. Um, section six, um, so this is where I'm going to ask for a little flexibility over the next week or so, but um, we would like to reorganize the hospital participation. Um, it says slides, but it should say uh, appendix to better align with the hospital budget process. Um, so we'd like to disaggregate. There's a line in there that says reserves adjustments and prior year reconciliation. So we kind of want to dig into that a little more um, and separate it by program and fiscal year um, and then understand when it's about, uh, you know, reconciliation to fee for service of those fixed payments or if it's really about performance settlement. So, you know, it, we are thinking about quarterly financials, but we think that that might be a little bit too much, but um, we would like some time to kind of dig into this a little further. Um, still hitting our July 1st deadline, but, you know, the spirit of that um, exercise will, will remain and it will align between the ACO and the hospital budget process. In addition, we would like, we think it's imperative that we add a glossary of key terms, um, and so we've started compiling that and would like another week or so to, to finish that, but that would just be to provide some definitions and clarity to, to the guidance. Um, in terms of next steps, so today I um, this might language for the motion might look a little different than what you saw earlier. Uh, Lynn, thank you for your help with this. Um, but this is the proposed motion to vote on the guidance that will allow us the flexibility to kind of finalize the glossary, finalize Appendix 6.6, .6, which is the detailed hospital participation, and then kind of adjust any formatting as necessary, which I think um, we're pretty much there anyway. And then the next date would be July 1 to issue the guidance and the certification eligibility verification form. And then September 1, we would expect uh, OneCare to submit the certification form and October 1 for OneCare to submit their budget. And that is what I have for you today. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, questions from the board? Very quiet group today. It must be that beautiful weather. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? Hearing none, is there a motion by a member of the board? I'm happy to make the motion. This is Robin. Um, I move to approve the 2021 ACO budget guidance and uh, allow staff to finalize the glossary and appendix 6.6 .6 relating to hospital budget participation, I mean, excuse me, hospital participation in the ACO consistent with our discussion today and adjust formatting to other appendices as needed. I'll second. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there further board discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is approved. Thank you, Elena. Another uh, very good presentation. Thank you all for all your help getting this over the line. Is there any old business to come before the board? Thank you.